right, good morning, HCC. Come on, let's stand to our feet.
maybe it'll go away. If everybody just huffs and puffs this way, we can blow it back maybe. So moving on, um, again, thanks so much for joining us this morning on this beautiful summer. I guess it's not technically summer, but it sure feels like summer day. You made it here despite the cicadas, and we love that you chose to be here to worship with us in person and online. If you are a newer person or a first-time guest, we want to connect with you, get to know you, put a name to the face, and there's a little blue card in the chair in front of you called the Connect card. You can fill that out and drop it off in an offering bucket, or you can bring it to the welcome desk that's out in the front foyer. Also, coming up on June 16th, that's a Wednesday, is our next Next Steps Orientation class. Uh, the Next Steps Orientation class is for uh, people who have not gone through the course yet, whether you've been here your whole life or are someone who is newer and you really want to get to know more about our church, what we believe, what we're about. Uh, you can register for the Next Steps Orientation class by emailing nextsteps at hcconline.org. Looks like our smoke has dissipated a little bit, so now we're going to continue with our worship this morning.
not walking. It's not pacing. It's not stopping, but it's running. No matter if you're serving from a place of victory or a place in the valley, his goodness is so pure. It's so holy. It doesn't end, but it's running. It's running. It's constantly chasing me. Let's sing that part out. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. My life laid down, I surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. One more time. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after.
this out. Sing. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it again. You're the Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. So this morning, right now, as our prayer team is up here right now, if you've if you're anxious or if you just need peace or if you need God to just move in any situation, just know right here, right now that the Bible says that make those requests known to him and he will answer them and he will give you peace, peace that passes all understanding. So right now we're going to go back into this song, but I encourage you to come forward right now if you need prayer. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah.
Let's sing that chorus one more time to sing of the God. You're the God who fights for me. Jesus. Come on and give it up for the good shepherd. Come on and give it up for the lily of the valley. Come and give it up for Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise is in this place. You all can be seated. I mean, if you want to stand up, you can stand up you may be seated the whole level of energy is different this service boy y'all came in here to praise the Lord amen yeah 
praises go up and blessings come down. So at this time, we're preparing our hearts and minds for giving. It's offering time. This is an opportunity for each of us to participate in this service. And here at Hamilton Christian Center, we give of our time, talent, and treasure. Why? Because we know shared together. And we do that in various different ways. And right now, we're going to do that in a means of giving. So there's multiple ways to give. You can go to hcconline.org or you can go to HCC Give 94,000. You can look in front of your seat and there are envelopes. You can put cash in the envelopes, write your name on it, or sometimes when I don't have money or when I didn't have anything to bring God, I would write down a scripture of what I needed God to do and I would put that in an offering by faith how many of you know that God gives each of us a measure of faith right he gives each of us a measure of faith but there are some of us who don't activate it and we don't activate it because we don't step out so there's a scripture in Malachi the third chapter it says will a man rob God yet ye have robbed me in tithes and offerings Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me in tithes and offering. Bring me all the tithes to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Neither shall the vine cast the fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call ye blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We love you, O oh God. We come to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus with one mind, one body, and one spirit. We thank you that you loved us enough to send us your only begotten son to die on a cross for our sins. Father God, we ask that you would touch each and every individual and share with them what it is that they should give. God, we know that we're not supposed to give grudgingly or out of necessity. And we pray, Father God, that you would liberate hearts and minds as a result of your giving, as a result of their giving. Father God, we pray that you would bless this offering, some 20, some 40, some 60, some 100 fold for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We thank you that you have entrusted your people to be able to advance your kingdom. We give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Are you here? Okay. 
I told the first service, if that's the kind of energy you want me to bring to this sermon, I'm not going to do that, okay? I, I need you to meet me where I'm at, so I'm going to do it again. Good afternoon. There we are. You're with us. You are here. I know you probably feel like we're in firefighter training. You walked into the sanctuary. I was told that the fog machine got stuck. It was like during meet and greet, you're like, I can't see my neighbor. How can I say hi to them? For those of you that are visiting with us or that are online, uh, that is not normal for us. So I just want to make sure you know that. And, uh, but it's, it's dissipating. It's going to be okay. We, our team adjusted well. Doors were open. AC was turned on. Air was flowing. Good job. Things happen. Let me tell you something. Some of the funniest stuff you'll ever be a part of. If you want to be entertained, stay in church. I'm going to tell you right now. Before there was Facebook, it was called church. People did stupid stuff in real time and in real life, like right in front of you instead of posting it. Like, that was the post. <laughs> it was good stuff. We had, uh, we had all kinds of different people that there had worship preferences and styles. One, one lady growing up, she, she danced just like a chicken. Would cluck, like. That was her. We had another guy that would start a motorcycle. After about the, after about the fifth or sixth one, I knew that engine was going to kick off. And then he was going to take off. <laughs> Possibly. We had one guy that, when the Spirit of God moved upon him, maybe that's what it was, he would do push-ups. It was pretty impressive because at one point he was over 90 years old, so I think there was something happening there. <laughs> like I, I, can, I, do about, I can do about 40 right now without stopping, but if I'm over 90, I'm still doing push-ups. It might just be the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be honest with you right now. So hang in there. If you want to be entertained, be a part of a church family because it can be, always be it's just real life. It's real life with real people serving a real God. You just never know what's going to happen. Amen. Hey, I want to encourage you... Um, I've come to know some rhythms in my life. I'm now, will be approaching this October six years as a lead pastor here, and I absolutely adore the job. I love it. I love it. You guys are awesome. You're, you are an incredible people to love and serve and, and, and do life with. So thank you for those online with us. Thank you so much, and those in the house today. Um, but, but I'm coming to you with an appeal, and I'm going to, I told the first service, <clears throat> I'm going to give all that my body, my soul, and my spirit will allow this summer for you. I, I'm going to pour into you, and it's not just going to be from the pulpit. Like There's strategic and intentional things to grow this house. And what I mean by grow, because you immediately think, oh, you're talking about numbers and money. No, 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 no. That's a byproduct of a people that are drawing close to Jesus. And we're going to grow up this summer. Look at your neighbor and say, grow up. That sounds harsh, doesn't it? Because it, it is a little bit. Uh, but we're going to grow up. And uh, there's a movie. I, I don't know if you know this or not, but Hollywood doesn't really care about you. They want your money. Does anybody know that? Yeah, but, but there are some movies that move me. And one of them that moved me dearly because of my love for the game of baseball was called The Field of Dreams. And this movie is involving the main character who was a farmer. And he was out in the field. And he heard in the wind, if you build it, he will come. Um, and he was talking about the famous baseball player at that time, Shoeless Joe Jackson is what he was known as, and he and his whole team gambled against themselves, and they all got kicked out of the game of baseball, never to return. So he redeemed their spirits by creating this field that this voice told him to build, taking away money he, gave, he sacrificially gave. And this always ministered to me as a pastor because not only do I love that game, but there are times that I feel like the Spirit of God is speaking to me and it doesn't make sense and we're cutting down crops. <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing? Uh, but if you build it, I believe that he's already here, but I believe they will come. And who's they? There's so many people in this community. The statistics tell you over 50% of people in your community do not have any desire to walk through your doors. Will never step foot. Never, actually, it's, not, it's, it's more percentage won't. But those people don't even think about you. They don't think about this church. It's not even in their mind. That burdens my heart. 
And I go, church, what are we going to do about that? I think we have to grow. We have to really look at the word of God as a mirror unto us and deal with what we can deal with, which is us, right? So this summer, there's a major emphasis on growing. One of the ways that we're going to grow is we're going to be involved. We're going to get involved. We're going to serve. We need you to serve. Uh, one of the examples is this. Uh, we are not at this. I'm just going to cut. Can I cut it to you straight? No, can I do that? I'm going to. All right, so uh, first service, by the way, you guys were coming in, so I had to cut it short. I don't have to cut it short in the second service. I do have to catch a flight, though, so I can't preach two hours, so I might just preach one, all right? But uh, heading down to Florida, we're going we're gonna to baptize that young lady, Danielle, and yeah, her daughter, Lily, and then she, she got a hold of me and said, hey, I have a two-year-old son, Jace. Would you be able to dedicate him? I said, yes, add it to the list. Let's do it. I'd love to. So tomorrow night, sunset, we've got, to, we've got a videographer that's going to be there. We're going to document everything, and you guys will get to see it, so it's going to be good. But um, I, I say all that to let you know that as we move into this summer, we need to serve, and we need to volunteer, we need to engage, we need to part of, be part of our dream team. Um, the reason we don't have kids ministry right now in this service is because we don't have enough workers. So that's just the sobering reality and, and I, I'm not guilting anyone, I'm just presenting reality to you that this church is not supposed to recant. This church is not built to just survive. We were built and presented. We are celebrating 75 years of existence. This September we're going to have a celebration of our anniversary, the first weekend of October. We're going to have a special weekend. Be, put that in your calendars. Why? Because... It's about Jesus, and Jesus has sustained us, and he will continue to do that. But there's still work to be done, and it doesn't happen with robots. Not yet, anyway. I know, it never will be, all right? We don't have robots. We need you. We desire to partner with you, and I hope that you would desire as well. So out in our merch counter, which is out here in this foyer space, used to be a call to courtesy counter, other stuff, there's several teams. I want you to really pray about what you can do to partner with us. I mentioned one department, but everybody. The pandemic really did a number on churches. Every pastor, every church will tell you this, that when we spent four months, some people spent a year online only, it really drew us back. You know, we just kind of got used to being not as involved. So the church took a hit, but I'm here to tell you, man, I'm ready to move. And I know that this fall, we're going to start seeing people come back in at levels we've never seen before. I really believe that. So if that's the case, we got to prepare for that, right? It doesn't happen by accident. So I ask you to be praying about that, and this whole summer we're going to gear. As a matter of fact, in July, I'm only going to be ministering one Sunday in July from this space, and that's actually going to be outside July 4th. Every other Sunday, I'm going to be serving somewhere on a team because I'm going to demonstrate by example that it's not just about this position that I have, but it's about being the church. So I'm going to be in the cafe, I'm going to be in the kids' department, I'm going to be a greeter, I'm going to be a little bit everywhere, and other people are going to fill the space that I occupy here. Because I can't ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. Am I preaching any? Are you guys, you guys here with me? Are you with me? I'm not going to, here's the bottom line. My goal is to never give you an excuse. Right? I feel like I'm preaching to some people that are struggling already. If you're struggling now, wait until about 5, 10 minutes from now. Okay? Because the challenge doesn't get easier. I, I, have, I have this crazy thought that we're one day closer to Jesus coming back. And the church shouldn't be just surrendering and going, oh, well, devil's won. We're post-Christian era in America. It's just what it is. Really? That sounds like an army. That sounds like the church. Come on, man. We are, we are destined for greater. God is convicting and moving our spirits. Do you feel that? So, let's get in, uh, enough of me talking. we got to get into the Bible here. Ephesians 4, jump in there with me, 4, 14, 15, and 16. These scriptures just jumped out at me, and I'm going to actually rest in these scriptures for three months. I'm going to pull three months of stuff out of these scriptures. Like, I don't believe it. Try me. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to only preach these scriptures for three months, so take a deep breath. But what has come from this is three months of inspiration, June, July, and August. 
Here's what we're going to have June. We're, we're, we're going to focus on growing all summer. I, I look out here, and I don't know about you, but I'm cutting my grass. Well, I'm not. I have somebody that's coming. I really appreciate him. He's awesome. But it's getting cut a lot. All right, anybody else cutting their grass often? Why? Because things are growing. I'm inspired for growth. Pollen's growing. Anybody been feeling that, right? Cicadas are growing. But the church is dying. No, 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 no. Everything around us is growing. So I think it's the right season in the summer to dig in and grow. So you guys ready to grow? You guys ready to grow? All right. You said it. Here we go. Ephesians 4. That we should no longer be children. Hold on one second. We still didn't, man. We still didn't get anything put in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that right now. How you like my bib? Looks real. If you tell me this looks good on you, I'm gonna be really mad. Because what I'm doing right now is not how it's supposed to be. There we go. Ooh, that was almost a fumble. Great recovery. I gotta encourage myself sometimes. There it is. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of Facebook. I'm sorry, de deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth. In love. Is this as awkward for you as it is for me? Yes. Borderline creepy. <laughs> Weird. But yet Christians, their whole journey, do this. You've been guilty of doing this. Look at your neighbor and say, grow up. I need you to help me preach because that way it doesn't look like me being mean. Look at your neighbor and say, grow up. All right, man, you guys are doing great. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love. What is truth? Truth is growing in inspired knowledge. Where do we get knowledge from? It's from the Spirit of God, which who wrote the Bible, the Spirit of God, so we get knowledge from what? The Word of God. So we're going to know some things through the Word of God, and that's the month of June. Growing is knowing all month of June. May grow up. Oh, I, did, I didn't make that up. It said it in Scripture, by the way. In all things into who? Him, capital H. That's Jesus, who is the head. That's Christ. From whom the whole body, by the way, you're part of the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Is anybody hearing any words that sound familiar? Did I just tell you that trusting or truth in love is knowledge that's knowing? Then it's telling us right here that we need to share. And then it said something about Together, this is exciting. So July, growing is sharing. And then in August, growing is together. We are going to rest in this, and you and I are going to grow up together. We're going we're gonna to put this down. So here's what I'm seeing out of this. As it ends right here, it says, causes what? what doing this does what? There's, there's a byproduct of this. It caught, there's a reaction to this. You know what it does? It causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Guess what happens to the church when you grow up? It grows up. And a fully mature adult church is a church that grows. It gives. It's selfless. It loves. It sees people come to Jesus it has groups ministry. It has community. Life change is happening. Accountability is happening. A burning desire to live the life that Jesus has presented in his word is happening. What I see in these scriptures is this. We need to grow up. How? Truth. Knowledge. 
So what that would happen? That every part will share time, talent, treasure, testimony, and that we do it together. We are knitted together. And guess what the amazing result is? Causes growth of the body. Today I've got two points, but I'm only going to get through one because I talk too much. That's just the bottom line. I have to own that. I'm working through that, okay? Here's the title of my sermon today. Growing is knowing selfie problem. You and I have a selfie problem. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to get this out right now. For those of you that don't have one of these, you are so close to Jesus, at any moment now you may just vaporize and disappear to be with the Lord. But if you have one of these, I need you, I, I know this feels a little awkward, but please get your phone out right now. Because I have created a selfish calculator. We're going to find out how selfish you are based on the amount of selfies you have in your phone. So here we go. Everybody take a deep breath. I know this feels like I'm, I'm all up in your living room. I get it. Okay, I get that. So you're going to go to your photos. So if you have an iPhone or another phone, wherever you're... <coughs> main hub is for your photos and then when you do that it actually breaks down the type of photos videos portraits selfies okay <clears throat> and everybody take a deep breath here your pastor has 751 selfies in his phone I'm the first one here, folks. I'm going to tell you right now. I have 10,882 photos in my phone. So you take the number of selfies, and you divide that into the number of photos you have, and you get a percentage of 6.9. So I am 7% selfish. Just curious to know where your might be. I did this with, with Amanda, and of course she was less selfish than me. And then my son... Huh. He like saw the number and went into his selfie mode and deleted a bunch of them. Because <laughs> he said, Dad, most of these are me fishing anyway. Guys, I'm trying to have some fun here. So if you feel convicted, that's between you and the Holy Spirit. I have not created a legitimate system that gives you a percentage of how selfie you are. I mean, selfish you are. Are you with me? I literally had so many people after service, first service was like coming to me trying to defend themselves. I said, listen, that's between you and Jesus, okay? I'm sorry I stirred the pot, and I'm not, okay? That's my job, all right? So I'm here to tell you that we have a selfie problem. Not whether or not you, I, again, I'm trying to meet you where society is at. I had people also come up saying, I don't even, I don't even take selfies. Well, praise. You obviously don't have a pride issue either. Right? I'm going to need you to stay with me today. All right? I know I've already offended you. Okay, I get it. Okay, let's move through it. What did we do before selfies? Now, I know that we got some generations here. You got a little more of this stuff going on in your hair. You lived in a time where this was not as much of a conversation. There was still selfishness and the sin of pride and it's always been around, right? It's always been around. But, but can I just be honest? It, it's, it's at an all-time high in my experience. And, and the world has figured out how to pull money out of you like no other. Social media is just an amazing machine that is, no matter what your age is, if you're on it, it knows so much about you, it's so scary. It knows how to trigger you. It knows what you want, when you want, and what time of the day you mostly want it. It's actually triggered to trigger you. I don't know if you know that or not. It's a monster. And it owns us. Yesterday, I, I literally was distracted from watching my own son play baseball because of this thing. And I had to physically remove myself from it. I had to hand it to my wife, mom. My wife, and I said, babe, take this and put it in your bag two rows, a uh, row behind you so I can't even get to it. I have a problem. 
This is not a cigarette. This is a cell phone, but it feels pretty similar. And I've never been a cigarette smoker, but I can only imagine it feels something like this. It's got to be in my hand. I've got to touch it. I've got to smell it. It's got to be near me. It's got to glow. It's got to be fun. I, 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 guys, I'm being real with you right now. You and I have a problem. And you say, well, it's not me personally. Well, our society does, so are you knees praying for the next generation? Because if you look at a room of people, there's no engagement, there's no community, there's no sharing Jesus together. This is our God. End of story. This is our God. They have figured out a way to trigger us at an all-time level while people are dying and going to hell. They're completely miserable, and we're worried about whether or not we got a like. <laughs> 2003, 2000, that sounds like, I can't believe that's a long time ago already. It'll be nearly 20 years soon, but 2001, I got married to the most amazing woman on the planet, and there were cameras then, by the way, just so you know, and then there were cameras many years before that. But cameras' main focus was about taking pictures of things that were happening, not about us. It was us getting in a picture, someone else holding it, that's fine, or taking pictures of other people, but... I remember we were in Billings, uh, no, we were in Fargo, North Dakota. I was playing my third year of professional baseball, and Amanda was pregnant with Curtis Jr. And we realized, uh uh-oh, what they told us would happen has happened. We got married, and now babies are coming. And we need to document it. Cell phones were flip phones and other stuff. They had some cameras on them, and you couldn't even detect what it was. It was like, I don't know what that is. So we went and bought this $500 beauty, this Sony it's called a digital camera. Could store like a thousand pictures. That was a big deal. I have 10,882 photos in my phone now, which a phone was supposed to be to call people. I have 10,882 pictures in my phone, and I have room to take more. It's just crazy to me. But when we bought this, it was never intentional. I'm not trying to tell you that 2003 was better than 2021. Please hear me. We did not spend $500. It wasn't even our money. It was on credit, by the way. We did eventually pay it off about a year ago. Um, just kidding. Huh. That's how credit cards work too, isn't it? Praise God. All right. We did not buy this and go, man, I can't wait to get this because I'm going to do this all day. Nah. You know, I, I think about this. I w- I went to the Yellowstone National Park. I'm so thankful. I hope one day I get to go there again. That's like another planet, by the way. If you've never been there before and you get a chance to go see a redwood tree or see the mountains or see a geyser blow, I mean, what? How did that get here? Like, that was nuts to me. I never once thought about, boy, I would look really good in this picture with this mountain. I was just in awe of God. In all of God. If we go now to a place where we should be in all of God, the first thought that we have is I would love for my big old fat mug to be bigger than that waterfall or that mountain. And the first thing someone sees when I post it is me. Guys, we have a problem. It is not helping us. Destroying us. And we are just monsters that can't get enough of ourselves. I want to share a scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And and I need you to understand the context of this because so many people get this wrong. They sit in their pew or their padded chair and they go, yeah, you preach about them. 2 Timothy is an epistle. It's a letter from Paul to what? The church. This is to you. This is to me. This is to the big C and this is to the local C, HGC. But know this. It's important that we know something, right? And Paul, hey, know this. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, know this. <laughs> know this. That in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, traitors, headstrong, haughty or the angry, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Here's why I know it's to the church. Verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such 
people turn away. Can I tell you, there has been and continues to be a great fall from the church. It's not the world's fault, it's ours. We have decided to market church to be a soulful, carnal, self-consuming bliss. And here's what the world knows. If I can have you desire for yourself to want more of yourself, it's a black hole that you'll never fill. So guess what? You'll continue to spend money. You'll continue to spend money. And you'll continue to spend money. Can I tell you something? Unfortunately, the church has triggered that as well. I'm going to preach to your flesh, and I'm going to preach to your soul, because you'll give money to that. You'll give time to that. You're triggered. Social media is not the only one that's figured that out, that we can't get enough of me. I can't get enough of me. Unfortunately, I think the church has too, and that's not our call. In the last day, people will come to church saying this. Boy, I hope he preaches me happy. I hope he helps me. I hope he feeds me or she feeds me. I hope they play my song. I hope I get my chair. How many people actually came into church today thinking about how they could bless somebody else? In America? I'm not talking to you. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to other churches. How many people? I think we'd be shocked, maybe not shocked. <laughs> the Bible warns us that this, that this will creep into the church. C can I just tell you though, that we need, to, we need to be aware of something. The most miserable people on the planet are self-consumed people. People that live on selfie mode are the most miserable. Yeah, they got filters. <laughs> they literally give you a fakeness of who they are, which tells you everything about the reality of where they're walking. Guys, we have to get off of selfie mode. And you're probably thinking like, Pastor Curtis, you're, you're being so harsh. I, I understand that. But I'm chief. I'm really worried about what I look like today. I shaved. Took a shower. I know this isn't like fixed hair, but I fixed it on purpose like this. I was really worried about which shirt or how I should wear or what I. Why? Because I wake up hungry. I wake up worried about me. Next week, I'm going to talk about focusing on others and how you don't have to train yourself to love yourself. You wake up thinking about yourself. We'll talk more about that next week. I'm jumping ahead. You need to be here. But, but there's something that happens with me on Sundays. I'm very worried about what you think. I've been dealing with this ever since I was a youth pastor. You know, I, I act tough, but I'm really not that tough. I've got a pretty big soft spot in here. And it moves me what you think. And that's something I have to work through and process. And I'm growing up too. So Pastor Curtis, that's the last thing I thought. Yeah. Sometimes I just front, I'll be honest with you. It's part of the journey, right? I'm not saying I'm a fake or a facade, I'm not. But I need you to understand something. For the longest time, right after I preached, one of the first things I did when I got in the car is I got on Facebook to see how many people liked the service. Did they make a comment about how I preached? This is real talk, people. This is who we've become. Did I get in the car and say, God, were you pleased? God, are you smiling? Was I obedient to the Spirit of God? Did we do what you've called us to do? No, I was worried about what you thought. That is a, that is a pit that can never and will never be filled. And I've come to realize something five years in. I will never be good enough for you. I will never be enough for you. I will never fill a God-shaped void because I am not Jesus. Not all of us in here are pastors or preachers. I'm the only one. But can I tell you something? This applies to your life as well. Quit trying to be something that you can't be for others.
The secret to joy and fulfillment in life is to get off of selfie mode. Yes, yet our world is working really hard to keep you on selfie mode. Because if I can keep you on selfie mode, I don't care if you're miserable. I want your money. I want your love. I want your attention. I want your kids. Can I tell you something? They already got your kids. And this is a harsh reality, parents. They got your kids. They got them exactly where they want them. We got to lead strong and intentional at home. We have to ask questions. We've got to engage. But I'm going to tell you something. I heard this word very young in my life, and it sounded really like, ooh, narcissism. That sounds really intelligent. Sounds really serious. What was diagnosed as an unhealthy behavior for people has now become narcissism. We live in a society of not narcissism. We live in a society of narcissism. It's called social media. It's called Facebook. Could you imagine if I would have bought this camera or if I had a throwaway camera back in 2000 and I just sat around the house and was like, tsh, 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 walked around the neighborhood, came into church, like, tsh, tsh. you'd be like, what is wrong with that fella? I think he's a narcissist. You'd be like, man, you might want to go talk to someone. But today it's an, it's an encouraged and an accepted behavior. I wonder why we're miserable. I wonder why we're unfulfilled. Because you're trying to throw stuff into a pit that is never going to be filled without Jesus being Lord. Without him being the priority. We're unhappy. We're depressed. We're unfulfilled. Can I tell you one of the greatest things you can do is get yourself off of selfie mode as soon as possible. Get the focus off of yourself. What would it look like if you actually perceived God and others as greater than yourself? What would your life look like? I can promise you something. You'd be way more fulfilled. <laughs> I promise you. Young people, I need you to hear me right now. I know I got gray in my beard and I'm already... Look at that old man, just look at him, talking crazy. How happy are you, kids? Let's just be honest, you can't get enough likes. If there's a million, you want a million and one. If you had a million and one, you want a million and two. How many followers? What, what, what number would be fulfilling for you? We had our own snags and our own things in our generations, but I'm looking at you and I'm saying, this thing doesn't get better. They have tapped into something with us. Now, what maybe some of you would say is, well, Pastor Curtis, this is, whoo, you're being kind of mean. I understand that. I understand that feeling. I get it. But Pastor Curtis, you know, aren't we supposed to take care of our body and, like, you know, eat good? And I, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Like, okay, there's balance with all this, right? Here's how we decipher. When it comes to self and stewarding what we've been given, at the end of the day, whatever you're doing, who receives the glory? That will determine whether this is an idol or it's stewardship unto God. End of the day. Who are you hoping to get one of these? If it's you... It's not of God. As a matter of fact, it could be demonic, even within the church. Because that's what the enemy wants. Man, don't make it about Jesus, make it about you. But if at the end of the day, people are aware of the Father, they're aware of the Spirit, they're aware of the Son, they're aware of His kingdom. So there's two things to focus on. There's two things. And I'm only going to share one with you today. And it's this. God. God. God deserves our focus more than self. True purpose, fulfillment, and joy happens when we take ourselves off of selfie mode and we put our attention on Him. Look what David said. David was a murderer an adulteress, a thief. 
And he said this, verse 4, Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. Give me happiness, I surrender. That's what he's saying. Lord, give me happiness and help me get whatever I desire and want. No, that sends you down a rabbit hole of misery. Teach me your ways, O Lord, starting in verse 11, going to 12. That I may live according to your truth, knowledge, truth, your knowledge. Grant me purity of heart so that I may honor you. With all of my heart, I will praise you, O Lord my God. I will give glory to your name forever. Guys, we're not supposed to give glory to God in heaven. We're supposed to give glory to God now. Right now. You want to bring heaven to earth? Worship him. Pursue him. Make it less about you and more about him. Did you know that's your purpose as a child of God? It is. It's to reflect. You know, the Lord's Prayer says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, I think it would be a good idea for us to see a snapshot of heaven. You want to do that with me? Let's do this. Verse 11 through 14 of Revelation 5 says this. Then I looked again, and I heard voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne and of the living beings and the elders, and they sang in a mighty chorus. Just imagine this for a moment. Worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, they sang blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped the Lamb. Do you know what's not in heaven? Selfies. Because you ain't worried about yourself. You're just worshipping the Lamb. Your focus is on Jesus. Can I tell you that I've been saying this and I want you to hear me. Everything I've been communicating today, I've struggled with in my own journey. I struggle with it today. I like to make a lot of things about me. Why wouldn't I? It's fun. Do you know that the ruler of this world is not God? Oh, I thought he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes, in his sovereignty, he has cast down an enemy known as Satan. But he actually rules this world. How could you not believe that? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. And we have to be aware as children of God who are born again, led by the Spirit of God, we have to identify that that is an enemy of God. And do you know who is an enemy of God? Your flesh. Yourself. The Bible says you're born an enemy to God. That's the gospel. We have to recant. We have to repent. We have to ask God, please kill Curtis, that should be my prayer every day. God, kill me. (laughs) Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But I'm being real. I get in the way all the time. My desires, my wants, my thoughts get in the way of what God desires every day of my life. So here's the thing I need you to hear. I just gave you a snapshot of heaven. 24-7, every single day, angels sit around the throne and worship God, crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God, and we can't give him 15 minutes. I'm going to get a drink of my bottle after that. We come into church and we're worried about what people think. I'm the chief sinner. Will my shirt show my belly? <laughs> because it happened earlier. I was worshiping and whoop, oh, sorry, oops. 
what will they think? If I volunteer there or serve there, what will they think? Angels who do not know what it's like to be saved from an eternity in hell, you do. You've been redeemed. You've been saved. They worship him 24-7, every living moment. And we sit in a church service and go, oh, he played that song again. Yesterday I was walking to my truck and I was walking back. I'm just so consumed with myself. I, I don't know about you, but I just am. And I just, I felt the warmth of the sun. Yesterday was so beautiful, by the way. That was, that was a little heaven on earth. That was perfect. Temperature was perfect. I felt like the humidity was great. I felt warm. And then towards the evening, it just got even better. Humidity lifted a little bit. It just felt awesome. Now the cicadas were ridiculous, okay, but it just felt awesome. And I had the most holy, amazing moment walking back to that baseball field to watch my son. I'm sitting here and this temperature of the sun on my skin is perfect. And I go, God, you placed that sun exactly where you wanted it so in this moment, right now, I can experience your presence. If, you're, if that sun is several feet further or several feet closer, it changes everything. But it's exactly where it's supposed to be. In that moment, God initiated in me to have a proper perspective of who He is and who I am. And it was beautiful. It was simple, but it was beautiful. But you know what? I had a vision in the same day of a worship service. And everybody during worship, it was anointed, beautiful music. It was speaking of his greatness, of his goodness, of how awesome God is. Desiring to push people's attention away even from the band or the intention of being excellent or trying to sing well. And it was just an amazing moment. And everybody in the service was doing this. Now that may not be happening, but in reality it does. But can I just be honest with you? We are a distracted people. Your marriages are distracted. In your jobs and marketplace you're distracted. In your parenting you're distracted. And I think one of the most distracted places right now is in the church. And we wonder why we're not having a positive effect or a growth effect the fact that we should, we're distracted. We're distracted. The world's formula for success, the world's formula for being happy and fulfilled is more of you. More of you. But I believe this should be our prayer. I believe this should be our focus. This should be our hearts cry, Lord, help me to take my eyes off of self and take me off of selfie mode. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Let's just be honest. That I preached on Sundays in selfie mode. That I took this camera I put it facing me and I just looked at myself while I was preaching. I bet you come every week. Man, that, that's, that's some awesome communication there. He's staring at himself the whole time. Yet we live our lives that way. We do. We're so focused on self. There's so many people in our community, in our neighborhoods, and in this city need what you have get off of selfie mode now at the beginning of my sermon I had you take a look at your phone now I'm going to actually have you do something that I've been preaching against I'm just kidding just so you know I have no problem with the selfie I, I, 
I got 751 in my phone. That's a lot. Please don't try to come and defend yourself after the service, okay? Selfies are fine. But anything that becomes an idol is a problem, including yourself. If it's above God, it draws more attention, then it's an idol. It's not God. It's your God, but it's not God. But can you get your phone out again? Can you do me a favor? Find somebody to take a selfie with real quick. I know you want it. You're already, I've been talking about it. Some of you are like, ah, let me take a selfie already. Do it real quick. All right, now, come on. I'm going to take one with Brandon. Brandon, what up? Ready? Three, two, one. Nice. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to hashtag that real quick. For those of you that are in social media, if you're not, you're like, again, praise God, you're about to, you're about, the Lord's just about to take you right now. Hashtag this for me. Hashtag HCC. Continue with that hashtag all together. Me to He, capital H. That's what I want to leave you with today before we come back next week. Guys, we've got to move from me to he. I promise you, this, this seems backwards. Why? I'm just going to be real with you. i got to be real with you. You're allowing the world to disciple you more than the word. Some of you are offended by this sermon. That's because your God has become what they say. You've been actually persuaded to believe what they say. And they say, more of you is more happiness. How's that working for you? More likes is fulfillment. More focus on self brings true happiness. And the Bible, which is truth and knowledge, says no. Less of me, more of he. You are actually going against your purpose. Your purpose is to fulfill his kingdom. Your purpose is to glorify him. And when we live life in selfie mode, we are actually going against our very purpose. So I want to encourage you by the power of the Spirit to reconsider. I'm in no way saying get off of social media. If the Lord moves you in that, do that. I'm going to keep mine. As a matter of fact, I think social media can be one of the greatest platforms to give Jesus glory that there ever is right now. It is. But it's amoral. It is what do you do with it? It's like your money. It's like your relationships. It's like your job. It's like, what are you doing with it? Is it giving Jesus glory or is it giving you the glory? I'm going to ask you just in this moment, just close your eyes. Father God, I just pray that this word, that it will just settle in our hearts. That, that your word is true. God, God that you, you are clearly saying to us that we need to grow up. That we need to hear your truth in love, which is knowledge. And we need every part, and we are part of every part of your body. We need to share you and we need to be knit in unity together and God we, we recognize that the result of that is that your kingdom is establishing that you are growing in us and through us let us all take personal responsibility to grow and when we grow your church grows and people are saved people are discipled lives are changed so God we have a selfie problem. We recognize it. Lord, help us to get off a of selfie mode. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And can, we, can we get off selfie mode for a moment? And can we worship? Because he's worthy. Is he worthy of our worship? Come on. Let's worship together.
close your eyes again. Say, Pastor Curtis, I think it's kind of weird. Why do you have people close their eyes? I got to see what's going on. Somebody might get me. We're distracted. We are distracted people. And when we close our eyes, it allows us to just be in His presence, trying to ward off anything that might be a distraction. And we want to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And that's what I'm asking. Holy Spirit, speak. And, and by a show of hands, who here desires to get off of selfie mode in their lives? I want you to raise your hand right now. Come on. Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. I'm going to pray for you. Father God, those online and those in this place, keep your hands up. Come on. As a place of courage, as a place of strength. By your spirit, God, move. Move on every person. God, we were designed and created to give you glory and praise. Help us to rest in that truth. Help us to deny self at an all-time high. No matter our age, from 10 to 100, let us recognize if there's breath in our body, we are called to worship. We are called to give you glory and praise. Holy Spirit, guide us and give us the desire and the strength to do so. Holy Spirit, we're sorry that we've grieved you. Forgive us for grieving you with whatever, our time, our devices, our devices have become divisive cause problems in our lives and we are distracted help us to focus ever more on you in Jesus name now keeping your eyes closed is there anybody here who doesn't know Jesus as your personal savior you're in the right place and we're going to pray a prayer right now and if you've made this decision you can let us know you can text HCC faith all caps to 94,000 you can go out to the welcome table you can fill out a connect card in the pew right there, in the chair right in front of you. Take that to the welcome table. We want to know. We want to go on this journey with you, but it requires a repentive decision. And it says to believe in your heart and to confess with your mouth. And we're going to do that right now. Would you say this with me? Say, dear God. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, dear God, through your son Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior forgive me of my ways I trust you with my life I trust you with my spirit my soul and my body do it Lord you are my Lord I know you died on the cross three days later you rose again I accept it I believe it, and I confess it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. One more time, let's sing together. Come on. Goodness is running after, it's running after me. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. blessing right now precious heavenly father lord through your son jesus by the power of your spirit we thank you for this day in which you have made and we have rejoiced and we are glad in it god we recognize today the favor that you've placed upon us by your son we are your children let us truly recognize the identity of who we are because of what you've done Lord, we thank you that in you, Jesus, we can receive your peace. And I speak peace 
over every person online or in this house right now. Go before them, Lord. And God, I thank you that in your son, we get to do these three things. We get to know, share, together. Amen and amen and amen. Till we see you again, God bless you.